Hi, it's uh, good to be with you again today. And uh, so we're getting really close to Christmas. Uh, it will happen in about uh, 12 days. And so uh, looking forward to that and uh, hope and pray that uh, as you uh, think about Christmas and what that's meant to you, maybe from the time when you were a young child or maybe you can remember some of the things and some of the the great memories that you have from uh, Christmas's past. And uh, so I just want to, um, um, today want to read some scripture from John 3 and uh, just want to uh, just uh, have a prayer as uh, we begin. So God, is thank you for this day. I thank you, God, for your love and your care for each of us. May you guide and direct our thoughts and our words. May you be with us during this Christmas season that it will be a, a mean, meaningful experience uh, God, I just pray for the folks at the, the rest home. God, I pray for each one of them. May you be near to their and dear to their hearts this Christmas season. May you help them to um, have great memories from the past. And if, and if they can't uh, remember God, I just pray that you will just uh, be with them and comfort them in your, by your spirit. So God, I just thank you for the staff there and for everyone that, uh, that uh, you will be with us. You will guide us. You will direct us. Keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today I wanted to read some scripture from John chapter 3. Um, and then next week uh, I will concentrate more on um, the uh, story of Jesus' birth. So today John chapter 3 says, Now was a, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you do not know and understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. That's everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's a great verse that we've read and memorized over the years, and I'm sure some of you have as well. And then it goes on to say, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does not, everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. 
And I just wanted to um, just talk a little bit about uh, one of those verses that says, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And I was just thinking about that, that story from the Old Testament, from the book of Numbers, where it talked about uh, the people of Israel were uh, disobedient and they were complaining and, and murmuring against God. And uh, so these poisonous snakes came among the people. And uh, if they, they were venomous snakes, and if they bit someone, they, they died fairly quickly. And so the people of the children of Israel realized the sin that they committed. And so God uh, told Moses to make a, a snake and put it up on a pole. And that if you got bit by a snake, if some, someone from the children of Israel got bit by a snake, if they looked up to the, to the snake on the pole, and Moses made one out of bronze, that if they looked at that, that they would not die. And you know, that's a, a really important lesson for us that uh, it's kind of a, a picture of what happened to Jesus when he was crucified, that when we look, when we look at the cross and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, um, we're forgiven and we won't die. We may die an earthly death, but we won't die. We will have eternal life. And so that's a little bit what I want to talk about. But I, I read a story uh, that I would like to share with you. Um, I don't know where it comes from for sure, but uh, this is the story that I read. There was a man that was named Paul. He lived in a small town in the Pacific Northwest some years ago. He was just a little boy with his family when his family became the proud owners of one of the first telephones in the neighborhood. It was one of those wooden boxes attached to the wall with the shiny receiver hanging on the side of the box and the mouthpiece attached to the front. Now I know that I never experienced that, but I am quite certain that some of you know exactly the phone that I'm talking about. It was, uh, it was back early in the days of the telephone and uh, it was an amazing uh, new invention that uh, you would be able to talk to someone without going driving to their place by horse and buggy or whatever, that uh, you could actually talk to people. And, and they were party lines then and you had sometimes you could hear people, other people talking and you'd have to wait. And so this is the phone that is in this story. Young Paul listened with fascination as his mom and dad used the phone, and he discovered that somewhere inside their wonderful device, called a telephone, lived an amazing person. Her name was Information Please, and there was nothing she did not know. Information Please could supply anybody's number and the correct time. Paul's first personal experience with Information Please came one day when he was home alone and he whacked his finger with a hammer. The pain was terrible, and he didn't know what to do. And then he thought of the telephone. Quickly, he pulled a footstool up to the phone, climbed up, unhooked the receiver, held it to his ear and said, information please, into the mouthpiece. There was a click or two, and then a small, clear voice spoke. Information, I hurt my finger, Paul wailed into the phone. Isn't your mother home? Nobody's home but me, Paul cried. Are you bleeding? No, Paul said. I hit my finger with a hammer and it hurts. Well, can you open the ice box? He said, yes. Then go get some ice and hold it to your finger. And Paul did, and it helped a lot. After that, Paul called information please for everything. She helped him with his geography and his math. She taught him how to spell the word fix. She told him what to put, what to feed his pet chipmunk. And then when Paul's pet canary died and she listened to his grief tenderly and then said, Paul, always remember there are, there are other worlds to sing in. Somehow that helped and Paul felt better. 
When Paul was nine years old, he moved with his family to Boston, all the way across the country. And as the years passed, he missed information pleas very much. Some years later, as Paul was on his way out west to go to college, his plane landed in Seattle. He dialed his hometown operator and said, information please. Miraculously, he heard that same small, clear voice that he knew so well. Information. Paul hadn't planned this, but suddenly he blurted out, Could you please tell me how to spell the word fix? There was a long pause, then came the soft answer. I guess your finger must be all healed by now. Paul laughed. So it's really you. It is still you. Do you have any idea how much you meant to me during that time when I was a little boy? I wonder, she said, if you know how much your calls meant to me. I never had any children, and I used to look forward to your calls so much. Paul then went on to tell her how much he had missed her over the years and asked her if he could call again when he was back in the area. Please do, she said. Just ask for Sally. Three months later, Paul was back in Seattle again. This time, a different voice answered. He asked for Sally. Are you a friend, the operator asked. Yes, a very old friend, Paul answered. Well, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, she said. Sally had been working part-time the last few years because she was sick. She died five weeks ago. Before he could hang up, the operator said, Wait a minute, did you say your name was Paul? Yes. Well, Sally left a message for you. She wrote it down in case you called. Let me read it to you. And it says, when Paul calls, tell him that I still say there are other worlds to sing in. He will know what I mean. Paul thanked her and hung up, and he did know exactly what Sally meant. There are other worlds to sing in. We know this. Isn't that a beautiful and powerful thought for us today? And that is exactly what the writer of John chapter 3 says, and what it says it's all about. There are other worlds to sing in. In this life, and yes, even beyond this life, when Jesus said to Nicodemus that night, you must be born again. You must be born from above. That's what he meant. You don't have to stay the same way you are. You can make a new start. You can have a new life. You can become a new person. There are other worlds to sing in. And I know that some of you that will listen to this and that many of you have made that choice, that decision, that you are born again. I know that. I've heard you speak of that. And you didn't have to stay the same way you were. You could make a new start. You could have a new life in Jesus. You could become a new person, which many of you did. There are other worlds to sing in, not only in this world, but in the world that awaits us with eternal life. You know, the story of Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a, a, a key figure, a key leader um, among the Jews in the time of Jesus. He was probably, had a lot of money, he was distinguished, he was respected, he was from a respected family, most likely. He was a Pharisee. Um, he was one of probably more than 6,000 uh, people, Pharisees, who had taken a pledge in, in front of um, witnesses that they, would, that they would dedicate their lives to following every detail of the scripture, of the law. Nic Nicodemus was also a member of the Sanhedrin, uh, which was the Supreme Court of the Jews. The Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin only had 70 members out of the 6,000 uh, Pharisees, and they were the top 70 that made up the Sanhedrin jury, and Nicodemus was one of them. The Sanhedrin had a religious authority over every Jew in all the world. And one of his primary duties was to examine and deal with anyone suspected of being a false prophet. 
And so who knows why Nicodemus came to Jesus at night? There's been much written about it. I don't know why he came. Why did he come at night? Was he afraid uh, that uh, someone might recognize him talking to this Jesus, uh, who some considered him to be a, um, a false prophet? Was he fearful what some of his colleagues, uh, his, uh, his Pharisee friends or from the Sanhedrin, did he, or did he just want a private audience with Jesus that, that would be undisturbed? Or was he coming as a watchdog of the Sanhedrin? Or was he genuinely interested in getting to know who this Jesus was? We know all these are interesting questions and we do not have an answer to that. But what is amazing in all of this is that he actually wanted to come to talk to Jesus. I'm sure that his Pharisee friends would have mocked him, would have scoffed at him and said, what in the world are you going to want to talk to Jesus about? He's a, he's a traitor. He's a, he's a false prophet. Why would you want to talk to him? And they were absolutely suspicious of who this Jesus was. They had labeled him a troublemaker who was upsetting the people. And they were looking for an opportunity to silence him, as in they were looking for an op opportunity to kill Jesus because they saw Jesus as a threat. But Nicodemus did come to him. And he came to him and said, Rabbi, you must be a teacher who has come from God because no one could do all these signs and wonders and the things that you're doing apart from the presence of God. So he recognized that Jesus was more than just a mere human being, that he had some connection. And so Jesus responded to Nicodemus by saying to him, you can't see the kingdom of God without being born again. You must be born from above. And that's an interesting thing to say is that we need to be born again, that we need to be renewed in our, our understanding. It doesn't, it, this, this, this means that you can't become a Christian by making a few minor adjustments to your life. Uh, it needs to be a complete turnaround, as such as a radical rebirth, a rebirth from above, which of course means a new life from God. And you know what? Nicodemus didn't understand it. And I'm sure when I was younger, I didn't understand it either. I just didn't get it. I didn't understand what it means to be born again. But I do now. And I'm sure some of you do as well. So I am so grateful that God gave us this scripture. And then this, the verse that really speaks to, to me and to many of us is John 3.16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so I'm grateful for that verse. I'm grateful that we can know this Jesus that walked on the earth and, and, uh, and met with Nicodemus and said, you need to be born again. And I am so grateful that, uh, that God loves us, that he sent his son Jesus um, at this Christmas time to be born of a Virgin Mary, to be born as a baby, uh, seems so odd that, that uh, the Savior of the world would be born as a, as a baby that is, that is helpless, that the only thing they know how to do is, is, uh, is cry for something to eat and cry if they're, um, if they're not feeling well. And a helpless baby to be born the Savior of the world um, you know, we talk about this being a, an upside-down kingdom. Well, that's pretty, pretty upside-down to believe that Jesus uh, came as a baby. We, we know that's the truth, and we proclaim that. And so during this Christmas season, I pray that each one of us, again, will be thinking about what it means to be born again and what it means to uh, take Jesus' words to heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Let's pray. God, I thank you for this day, and I thank you, God, for the 
your love and your care and your grace and your mercy for each of us. I thank you for this Christmas season as, as this year has been unique to say the least. And uh, God, I pray that you'll be with the folks that uh, listen to this, that you may um, be with them and, and, and uh, help them to understand how much you love them, that you dearly love us as, um, as your children. And as um, we just are so grateful that you sent Jesus um, to live in this world for a short period of time. And we know that all of our lives are, are short as well. I mean, Jesus only lived 33 years. But uh, so if, if I'm speaking to you, I'm sure that there's probably many of you that are, are much older than that. And so I am thankful for each of one of your lives. I hope and pray that um, we will be able to, to visit um, in, in, the, in the close future. I hope that that's uh, something that will be a possibility in the, uh, as we come, go through Christmas and get into the new year. I pray, God, that uh, you'll just be with us. God, direct us all as we pray. And I, God, I just pray for each person, whatever struggle, whatever storm they're going through, that you will be with them. Lord, may you speak to them, to their heart, by your spirit. God, I just thank you so much for sending your Holy Spirit that uh, indwells us as believers. And so, God, I just thank you so much for being with us. May you guide and direct our thoughts and our words. And uh, let's just uh, close with uh, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you. Goodbye.